Good evening and welcome to Notes with Griff. We are talking about thermodynamics. We're going to take two days worth of thermodynamics notes and we're going to move on from there. So, here we go. Uh, Thermodynamics. First of all, thermodynamics is the study of chemical reactions and the energy involved. Involved, so that could be evolved or that could be released, whichever. All right, so just jumping right in, we're gonna get some background vocabulary out of the way first, and that background vocabulary is starting with system. System is where the chemical reaction is taking place. So, this is the only place. That the chemical reaction is actually taking place. So we're talking about the particles actually reacting with each other. And so that's what we're looking at for system. The surroundings then would be everything else in the universe. Moving on to joule. Joule is the SI unit of energy. So SI means the fact that basically it's a fancy way of saying the metric system. So it's the unit we use for energy when we're talking about it in science class. The calorie is also a unit of energy. It actually used to be the um, SI unit, but it is no longer. Um, It's just now used as a unit of energy. And we use calories in our diets every day. We talk about calories. Those are actually kilocalories, but nonetheless. All right, so let's move on just a little bit. And we know that one calorie, if we don't know that, we do now. One calorie equals 4.184 joules. And you can just convert back and forth to each other via that. So moving on to exothermic. Exothermic, if you look up that word, it means that energy is released. So we're talking about energy is released in a chemical reaction. What does that mean is that the system is releasing energy to the surroundings. So the surroundings will actually take on some of that energy in the form of what you would call heat. All right, so let's take a picture, look at this little graph here, and it's an exothermic reaction. And what we can see here, if we do some highlighting, Reactants are right here, products are down here. So if we look at the amount of energy, our reactants are at a higher energy. Oops, that was on the highlight. We probably don't want to do that. But our reactants are at a higher energy than our products. So energy, this right here, this is all energy that had to be given off. And that's why the products are at a lower energy than the reactants. Okay, let's shift gears just a little bit. The opposite of exothermic is endothermic. And endothermic means, you guessed it, energy is absorbed. So this is one where the surroundings are giving up energy. let's say giving energy to the system. This one will actually feel cool to the touch. When you touch this one, this one will feel cool. The other one will feel warm when you touch it for the most part. All right, so our same type of graph here, we have an endothermic reaction. Notice this is my reactants down here. This is my products. So as you can see, our reactants are at a lower energy than our products. So heat or energy, this is all energy that had to be added for this to happen. All right. Hope that makes sense. You may have to discern uh, between a graph, whether it's endothermic or exothermic, and maybe why. Okay. So moving on to the math of today, we've got some specific heat calculations. Specific heat calculations are just basically the amount of energy absorbed or released by a substance. 
And these substances are very specific. So each substance has its own specific heat. And we'll talk about that in just a couple of seconds. So our formula that we're going to use there is Q equals MC delta T. Where Q is energy. Q is energy and it's measured in joules. M is mass. And mass is measured in grams. C is something new, and that's specific heat. And this one also has a little longer label, joules per gram degree C. And last but not least, T is change in temp, or delta T is change in temp. And this is where we take T final minus T initial. So a lot of times you're going to have to take the final temperature minus the initial temperature, and this guy is measured in degree C. So let's look at an example and see if we can't solve one of these problems. All these problems are going to be plug and chug problems. So if we read through here, it says if 69.5 kilojoules of heat is applied to a 1,012 gram block of metal and the temperature of the metal increases by 11.4 degrees C, calculate the specific heat of the metal in joules per gram degree C. So let's highlight our fun facts. 69.5. 10, 12 grams, 11.4, and we're looking for specific heat. So if we look at our formula here, Q equals MC delta T, Q being energy. So which one up here is energy? That's right, 69.5 kilojoules. We must put that in joules, so to do that, we move the decimal three places to the right, giving us 69,500 joules. M is our mass, and that's going to be 1,012 grams. C is what we're looking for because it's our specific heat. Delta T, our change in temperature. This one gives us our change in temperature so we don't have to do the math, and that's going to be 11.4 degree C. So what I like to do before I start plugging things in is I like to isolate the variable I'm looking for. In this case I'm looking for C so I'm going to divide each side by M delta T. That way I can get C by itself. Which will leave me with C equals Q over M times delta T. And so now I'm just ready to plug everything in and solve. So 69,500 divided by 1012 times 11.4. When you type this in your calculator, please make sure you take 69,500 divided by 1012 and then also divided by 11.4. When you do that, you should get 6.02 joules per gram degree C. And this was given to us in the problem, the label, right there. So that's all we had to do. And there's our answer. All right, thanks. See you next time.